Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I'm glad you're with me right now. Listen, during our time here, we always have a great time, and it's because of you guys that check in with us every single day. Now, some of you are already here for Gary V. Mitchie and the boys do a phenomenal job of putting chapters on this whole thing, so you can jump right to that. But if you're going to stick with us, these are the things we're going to talk about today. Things that I love. Machine Gun Kelly's new solo is out. Uh, Cam Newton dummies a bunch of fathers at a 7-on-7 seven seven uh, seven seven tournament. And we talked about, we talked a little bit about football, more specifically where Derrick Henry is going to end up, Shane Gillis and his monologue at SNL and how he gave it to the man, but also doing everything he could for SNL because their ratings are through the roof. And now listen, I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys go to store.barstoolsports.com and you buy the merch. I hope you subscribe. Hope you unsubscribe. That is what keeps this plane at the highest elevation it could possibly be. And I know it's kind of lame to ask for things, but this is me asking you to please tell a friend just to subscribe to this podcast, whether it be Rumble or YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Downcast, anything. Enjoy this episode. I had a lot of fun doing it. Will was not in the shop today, but I hope you guys like it. Big hugs, tiny kisses. YouTube was four months old when I started my show. So like, it wasn't like people, like what you're doing now, people are like, oh, podcasts can hit. Right. Like yeah. it's known. When I was like, I'm doing this, people thought I lost my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. This is episode 264, and we're 264, 5, 265. Our guest today is going to be Gary V, but you guys know the deal, especially if you're tier ones. We're going to sit, we're going to talk, we're going to chat, have a nice time with each other. If you, uh, It's a solo on me right now, I'm assuming, yeah? So go ahead and get that thing out to a wide view. Boom, Will Compton's not here. His beautiful teeth aren't here. His witty personality is nowhere to be seen. He is in Chicago right now for the Barstool Combine Games. Now, I I put this in a tweet earlier. I don't know if you guys saw it. The only person with anything to lose in that game is Will Compton. Also, we'll talk a little bit bit about uh, MGK because I want to because I enjoy his new song that came out. We'll get more into that. And then also we're going to hit Cam Newton and other things. But before we do that, the Chevy Silverado has a command, it has commanding and unstoppable grit, legendary capability, and dependability too. We we've all spent time, seat time, as they call it in the biz, behind the wheel of a Silverado. And we're not just truck guys; we're Chevy truck guys. You know about the ZR2 family of trucks, lifted and ready for anything, right from the factory. But now, Silverado is taking it to the next level. With even more Silverado truck tech, like available Super Cruise, the only Super Cruise, only Super Cruise, lets you drive hands-free and tow hands-free on more than 400. Let me listen to me, 400,000 miles of compatible roads, with over 138 million miles of hand-free driving by customers. Uh, Super Cruise will help you get to your adventure energized, and it'll help you drive home. Go to Chevy.com where you can check out Silverado, build your own Silverado online and learn more important details about the Super Cruise. Big time stuff. We've all, listen, we've all gone on a road trip and eventually this little, this little muscle, I don't have a big one, but this one right here, just doing the pedal sometimes is frustrating and you'd be able to put that Super Cruise on. Maybe you're towing a nice little beautiful boat in the back. Guess what? Bing, bang, boom. You are energized when you get there. Just like I am today, boys, it's Monday. You're viewing this on Tuesday and I'm, I'm electrostatic to have you. Um. Before we started the show, I had Mitch. I made him pop on uh, Machine Gun Kelly's newest single, Just Let Me Go. Don't Let Me Go. Don't Let Me Go. Now, Sad Boy Song. And I gave you guys my whole spiel about Machine Gun Kelly and our two interactions. It was like yin and yang. One was great, one not so great, but not that way. It was flipped the other way around. I love this man's music. I think it's absolutely incredible. I had the opportunity to tell him. His album he put out, Tickets to My Downfall, was the best album I've heard since 2003, Blink-182's self-titled album. So, with that being said, you guys get a chance to go check that out because, uh, no no free shout-outs, but, you know, the boy's going to tell you what he likes, and that's what, I, that's what I like, dude. So, if you don't like that, too bad. You're watching the show. That's what I like. Uh, what else is going on? Cam Newton. You want to pop that video up for me real quick, Jackie? Because I've seen a couple things. The big news... 
the big news about Cam Newton right now is, uh, first off, anybody who's seen him in person looks like a damn action figure. Uh, he goes to, he's in what? He's at a youth football camp or something like that? Some sort of camp. Maybe like seven on seven. Seven on seven camp. Maybe. The softest version of football you could possibly be a part of. And a couple of hardos want to go in the paint with Cam Newton. Now, thank God for the roots coming out of his hat. Because truly, when you watch it at first glance, you're like, yo, that man's really handling himself a bunch of a couple of boys around there, which is nice. But then you start to notice the details and you see that this dude with the flat brim hat ripping around, getting pulled away by people. He's literally reaching to take somebody out and his hat hasn't even moved. Now that tells me two things. One, the dreads really help keep the hat on. And the second thing, maybe there's not enough circulation to his cranium because we've all had a hat on that was one snap too tight. <laughs> Mitch, you definitely know about that. It's hard. It hurts, right? Yeah. It's a bit of a deal. It's not comfortable. No, it's not comfortable. But dude, shout out, uh, shout out Cam Newton, man. Like, cause I don't know what I, you know, happened for this to happen. I don't know what series of events took place for this man to get in a fight with what looks like kids, uh, young adults. I don't know, but they must have done something real bad to piss him off because Cam Newton's constantly in the light, and for you to switch up like that in a hurry. You, you need to do something in a big way. Did you guys see the video? Yeah. What would you boys think about it? Cam Newton, big dub or big L? Big dub. Massive dub. Yeah? Massive dub. I mean, it's like four guys on one. How I want to know how old these kids are, though. I they look little. Yeah, I mean, Cam Newton's also like 6'6", six, six, and like, uh, you know, huge man. So he makes anybody okay. look little. Dude, bit the way you said man just now. I mean, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. He's definitely not fighting like youth teens. I think these are like probably <laughs> parents of, of kids. Yeah. I can see that. I definitely people, can see that. People are all uh, talking about his hat not coming off. You can see that the hat looks custom made to where his dreads were cut through the top of it. Yeah. So it's, it's held on pretty tight. It's like Groot with style, dude. I like that. It's a nice deal. Mitch, what do you think? I think it's one insane for Cam to even be attacked like that. Yeah. But like, I mean, he, he wasn't even like throwing any punches or anything. He was just like throwing people off of him. Right. Those people were flying. You know what he was doing? He's a big boy. Yeah. Becoming Superman, bro. Yeah. He's becoming super massive. Yeah, he's a dude, he's a big cat. Beautiful calves on him. Beautiful calves. When you're doing NCA fourteen create a player and you just put ninety nine on everything and the dude's like two forty, the legit just made Cam Newton. Except my dude was always white because I thought we gotta beat the odds even on this game. You know? Yeah, sometimes I make a black dude. Sometimes I crush a black dude, get a little uh, light skinned guy in there. Uh, what else, dude? What happened this weekend? You know what else happened this weekend? The boy, Shane Gillis. The boy, Shane Gillis, did SNL. Now, I was at Ernest's house before this whole thing started, and I thought it came on at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central. Him and his wife and their kid, they want to go to dinner. So I'm like kind of low-key being rude, rushing everybody through dinner, because I truly want to see this monologue, because I think to myself, Norm MacDonald, Norm MacDonald, if there are those of you who don't know, he was on the cast of SNL. He did the weekend report and then was fired. And he has this incredible monologue. I believe it was October 23rd, 1999. The reason why I know that, I looked it up last night. His monologue is essentially shitting on SNL the entire time he's on SNL because he was fired for not being funny. But a year and a half later, he's asked to host the show. So is it because he's not funny or because the show actually sucks? And he finishes with the patented line that's supposed to be, Hey, we have a great show for you tonight. But he says, hey, we have a bad show for you tonight, so stick around. And he goes at the entire cast and everything. I was on the phone with Ernest after, uh, after the whole thing yesterday. And he had a great point. He's like, he probably studied that monologue. Because what an incredible situation it is for Shane Gillis to truly have the ascent he, he has had. And I know people come at us all the time about, hey, get off. Yeah, you're glazing hard on the boy. Hey, get off. Shane's nuts. Da, 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 da. Like, listen. If you're able to have a homie that crushes life, you should be able to give flowers to the homie. Now, Shane is an absolute, we're past five minutes, he's an absolute fucking stud. Everything, the guy that you see on the stage doing his thing with the little, the shrunk shoulders and all that, that's him, 100%. He's the funniest guy in the room at all times. He's one of the wittiest people I've ever met. And he came on that stage, and what he didn't do is change himself. And I think that is the coolest fucking thing. Did you guys see the monologue, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't change himself. <clears throat> Dude laid down three gays, one retard, and said cracker. <laughs> On live TV. Like, and then congratulated himself during his monologue. He's like, yeah, I said cracker. Like, that is, 
and that's the thing too is this is another point that Ernest Ernest brought up and I keep bringing him up because uh these aren't my original thoughts these are just things that I also agree with like SNL itself the show it is now it's been on for 49 seasons is an iconic show like everybody loves SNL or the idea the concept of SNL if you're a writer or comedian I sure I'm sure at one point your goal was to get an SNL but the show is bad now it's not as good as it used to be it's got to be incredibly tiring for uh, for writers every single week come up with new material we're going to pack an hour of comedy with you know a small break for commercials and our our singing guests but we have to put five to six skits alive that are going to make people laugh lean super a show that lean super left and lauren michaels who's been a part of this thing for the entire time he can't go to shane gillis and he can't ask hey shane i need you to be yourself i, I need you to use your type of bravado the entire time he just has to get shane and bring him in and hope he doesn't change anything about himself which shane absolutely delivered i'm sure if you look up the numbers of the views i bet you that was one of the high, most highest viewed snl shows of all time and what does that tell us it tells us that comedy is a place that is sacred to be able to say whatever the fuck you want it should be the only place in the world not the only place in the world i'm going to take that back real quick but it should be one of the places that regardless of what you say, how you deliver it is the only thing that matters. This man in this world we live in, we're, you know, we're not going to get into all that stuff, but where the world we're living in now says the word gay three times. You remember being your mom's gay little boy, huh? Your gay best friend, all that. And then talks about his cousin who has Down syndrome and says the word retard and then hits us with a cracker after that. And then makes a, a, makes a black joke in between. That is... The reason why Shane Gillis is going to be on the Mount Rushmore someday of, of comedy. He refuses to change who he is. If you look in the back too, this is the best part. And I hope you zoom in on this, Mitch, during the show. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a girl with red hair in the back. And she, if you watch the entire eight minute monologue, she does not change her facial expression. She's livid the entire time. She's mad that this hot man is on the stage preaching. Now you can tell, and this is, this is my favorite part about the entire monologue. You could tell Shane was nervous. It was real. You could tell he was breathing heavy. I don't know if he had to walk up some stairs before walking down those three stairs, but he was breathing heavy as if he went through some stairs and he was feeling it out because he's now doing something in the public eye that he knows he has viewers that do not watch his shit. And he's got to essentially make you laugh while still being himself. So let's give a round of applause for Shane Gillis too. Like to me, that was one of the coolest things you could ever do. And one of the coolest things ever is host SNL, but we all think back to like the Sandler days and the Belushi days and the Farley days and all, all like all those times, like when we were growing up, that type of SNL. Now, the only guy I know from SNL is uh, the white dude and the black dude who do Weekend Report and Keenan Allen. Th those guys to me. And then all, all the other guys are... Keenan Allen. Is that his name? Uh, wait, no, it's Keenan Kel. What? Keenan Allen is an NFL producer. Oh, so Keenan, what's the other dude's name? What's his name? The guy I'm thinking of. Keenan Thompson, which was from Keenan and Kelly. You guys remember that? Of course. Hell of a show. Good Burger. Hey, welcome to the Good Burger. Can I take your order? That, he he's very funny to me, but I don't know the rest of the cast. And I, I was a kid too that would sit down Saturday nights, excited to watch SNL, excited to watch the skits. That was something I always loved, the Mad TVs and the Comedy Essentials. That's what, that was on at my house. So it was very cool to see one of your friends go and fucking kill it like that, dude. Gotta love it. Do you boys have anything to say about Shane and SNL. Do you guys watch it? Yeah, I already asked yeah. you that question. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was good. I, I thought his monologue was really good. I think the skits are just, they were trying too hard to force the Trump stuff. It, it's always political or religious. And it's like, can we not just have fun anymore? Hey, can the boys just have a little fun it's out a here? A little fun. Um, I still think there was funny parts of the skits, but the monologue, obviously, was there was some shock value in it. Um, and I think, obviously, Shane did exactly what people wanted him to do. Um, so yeah, congrats to him for getting on there. I'm sure it was so nerve wracking to be on that stage, and who knows, man? But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the monologue. It was just it was classic Shane. Classic Shane. Just just going at his family the whole time. Going at his family and doing that. It nicked me. It nicked me. I thought the Trump one was good. I sneakers. I thought the sneaker thing was hilarious because you obviously Shane does a great Trump impersonation, but I think they did a good job of doing the Trump thing. 
and then at the end of it, do like making fun of Biden as well. Yeah, like that's that to me is where I think we fall we fall off a little bit when it comes to like SNL in general, right? It's really hard coming at the right, and then not so much jokes to the left. But I I enjoy I enjoy when people make fun of people. I like it. I don't like it so much when it's on me, but you eat it and you fucking keep moving forward. Look for your opportunity to dummy somebody real quick. But yeah, dude, I was I was stoked for that. That uh, that absolutely fired me up. The uh, I tell you, boys, my my kid I taught my kid the Batmobile and the rubber band. Have you guys seen that? You guys used to do that when you were a kid. Uh, Take the rubber band, three fingers, two fingers. Uh, you never did that. Uh, I feel like that'd be a staple, dude. You, that, that's the first step. The next step is tech decks, and then your pants are halfway down your ass with a studded belt. But what what is the I'm confused on what the rubber band thing is. So if you take a rubber band, you put like a rubber band over the three fingers, uh-huh. and then you take your two fingers, go through one side of the rubber band and over, and then bend it. Oh, you get like a Batman. It symbol. turns into a Batman, gotcha. a Batmobile type of I thing. I thought you were talking about like the um pulling, just like getting yeah. your boys with rubber bands when you just like smack. Oh them. no, that shit! I would not do that to my six year old. Win had to learn. <laughs> yeah, win has got to learn quick, dude. We do have a saying in our house, act like a bitch, get treated like a bitch. That is uh, a saying in the Lawan household. Our kids haven't heard that yet, but my, my wife and I, we definitely explain that to each other. <laughs> but it's cool. Uh, Wynn's definitely at that age right now, dude, where she's she's acting some type of way, like she's trying to find the line of being a little bit rude. And that that pisses me off. Cause I, she's going to start testing you. Dude, soon, she like, and she and does. She isn't already. Yeah, but I'm finding, I'm, it's a cool part because I'm finding my lane as a father. Like I used to think, oh, I'll be the fun dad and I'll be this and that. When it's playtime between me and Talon, I dummy Talon in the fun, the fun category. I absolutely murder her. Like I'm out there. My kids are like, daddy, pretend this. I'll f- I'm pretending I'm that right then and there. But the, on the other hand, when it comes to discipline, Talon's not as hard on them as, as I am. And I found myself in the good, like I, I'm a good, solid, grumpy dad now. I do, I do a great job of finding some grump in me. And my kids are starting to look at the, the look. When they're not listening to mom and I give them one of these, they just know right then and there, I got to go do what I was supposed to do. So I had to have a big talk with Wynn this week because she was, it was a full moon outside on Saturday. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they were out there damn near howling, bro. They were going crazy on the whole thing. It was a bit of a deal, man. It truly was. Uh, kids, man. They, and just, it never stops. So when you two have kids, just make sure you're ready because there is no downtime. There's no chill boy. There's no time for Mitch to go make his crackers, peanut butter, and jelly. Dad, there's no time to leave work at noon on a Friday to go work out. Well, actually, that, that time will still be there because you'll be at work. Do we, do we want to go down this road? <laughs> just, I mean, we're just I, having fun, dude. I know. I know. I, I just, I would, you need to look at my contract. Oh, is your contract say I get to work out at noon on Fridays? No, it says that I'm in the shop four days a week when I'm here five days a week every week. So I mean, if you were if you were on the Man. business side of it, then more is required. Yeah, more is required. The people that are listening now, if you're here for Gary V, great. We'll get to him in about mm, thirty minutes. But I want you guys to know that without you guys subscribing, unsubscribing, and resubscribing, sending it to your friends, commenting, all that stuff, we're nothing. We're absolutely nothing. We're just one big dumb idiot and his other big dumb idiot spewing bullshit into a microphone while nobody watches. Without you guys, we're nothing. So. Jack, thank you for coming in five days a week, I guess, brother. I appreciate that. You're never off. We're never off. We're never off. What, what do you mean? You take plenty off. What do I take off? <laughs> do you think I just go work. home and I fuck around and I don't think about this at all? I don't know. I'm not there answering emails, dude. I got a computer now. I, I, I got a computer. You guys know what I might have coming up the pipe? We don't want to say it on the show. What number of computers that? What's that? How many computers have you had? Is that the second, third? That's my third computer in 24 months. But that's not a bad number, right? Like, how long have you had your computer? I, I still have the same computer from college. I'd hate to see the search history on that. Yeah, yeah but I, I mean, I still have it. I haven't lost it. And I have the one that you, y'all you gave us. I mean, I don't lose my stuff. I, uh, Jack, how long have you had your computer? I got a new one, I think, two years ago. But I, that's my personal computer. And then I've had this one for, I don't know, probably the same amount of time. I think I got this one after I got my personal one. What's the point of having two computers? I bought my own computer, and then we started getting paid here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got this one. So this was this one came, like, I think six months afterwards. So work computer, personal computer. Did I, did I pay for that computer? No, I don't think so. Bustin'? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess. 
in a way, maybe you did. Absolutely. It, yes. Maybe. 100%. Probably Will more than you. But, no. I mean. Will we'll and see. I get paid the same. Oh, I don't know. Every dollar that we spend, we don't make. I don't know. It might I be paid for half of that. Yeah, maybe. I paid for half of that computer. Yeah. Look Where are we you, getting dude. at right here? Nothing, nothing, dude. Oh, yeah, I mean, really just like, just filibustering my own <laughs> podcast right now. That's all I'm fucking doing. I'm just trying to have a good time. Should we hit a twisted question? We don't technically have one in the reads, but I think it's still fun to... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. March 5th. Go ahead, Mitch. I gotta find one. Oh uh, my you go god, ahead, you yeah, gotta yeah. stay ready, dude. Listen, Twisted Tea. Twisted Tea is a refreshing hard iced tea made with real brewed tea and 5% alcohol. Full of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted Tea goes down smooth. There is no carbonation. It makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted Tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. It is the perfect alcohol slash beverage for game day, whether you're tailgating in a parking lot, watching at the bar, or watching with your friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to turn up your game day. Do us a favor. Keep it twisted, ladies and gentlemen. Grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. Mitch. All right. This is one that we were kind of talking about in the office. I don't know if you were here for it, um, but it's kind of like a, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Say that, so. The question is: You're say, doing great so far, yeah, by the way. Say your kid gets kidnapped, and the only way to get them back is to kidnap somebody else's kid. Yes. But but you never give the other person's kid back. Done. I get my kid back, though. You get your kid back. Absolutely. That is the easiest. Taylor, do you want your child back? Yeah, yes. I, you, Would you do anything to have your child? I'll ruin another family's life to preserve mine. Let me find another one. Yeah, do another one. And some of you think I'm a bad guy for that. You guys don't have kids then. Or you hate your kids. But my kids rip. Other than when my kid well, other than when it's a full moon. Would you change that, Jack? No, I don't even have kids. And I just know if I had a kid, I'm one hundred percent doing anything in my power to get my kid back. But you you have a dog that you love, right? Yeah, like you that's the like same you're... with a dog. I would I would steal someone else's dog to get my dog. Would you back. steal somebody else's kid? Probably. Good. That's a guy with good morals. What about okay, <laughs> kind of kind of along the same <clears throat> kind of along the same lines? What crime would you commit to like if you committed this crime, then it could never happen again, like in all of humanity? Yeah, that's that's a good one. But you have to commit the crime yourself. Yes. Okay. My first thought is murder. Wait. So the question is, you commit the crime, and it's it'll never happen again once you commit the crime. Like for anyone in existence, you're yeah. like. You get to do like one small bad thing to clear like a bunch of right. No, I was saying like it's like if you like he tells it if you you have to murder somebody and then murder will never happen again forever or yeah. for everybody yeah. or like everybody ever. Yeah. So essentially, I fall on the grenade of whatever the thing is, and this is the answer because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know, because what if I I have to do this then? Think of the worst thing, the worst crime ever, the thing that affects people the most. I don't have that answer. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm gonna do. And it's going to, I'm going to look like a terrible person, but it's kind of like one of those, do you take one person out to save a hundred? You know what I'm saying? The railroad dilemma. The railroad dilemma. Yes. If I, I don't want to say what the crime is, but we can all use our imagination on what the worst possible crime is. Right. Mitch, you thinking about one? Yeah. Say it out loud. No. Say it out loud, Mitch. I, I don't want to think Jack, say something bad. What? Any crime? The worst crime you could possibly think of. Sex trafficking. Yeah. I would sex traffic. Don't clip that. <laughs> Don't clip that. But just listen. Hear me out, dude. Yes, it's a horrible thing. And that is the reason why. How many times? Super Bowl is a big one. Every Super that's like the biggest time of the year for sex trafficking. If I commit one sex traffic, just one, and I know it's terrible because I've ruined that person's life, I'm now viewed as one of the worst people that's ever lived in the entire world. It never happens again. Ever. So, I'm a hero. But it's like one of those things, is it known that it'll never happen again? Or is it just, we, it just like, it's not like a said thing, like Taylor committed this crime, therefore it'll never happen again. It's no. just one of those things that just never happens. Right. I just know it never happens again. I never get the credit for obviously stopping sex trafficking. So, you wouldn't necessarily be a hero. You'd be a hero no, in like I would. your own I mind. would know. But isn't that what being a hero is all about? Huh? If you live for the cheers, you're going to die by the booze. For me, if I know I could stop sex trafficking and I, all I have to do is commit it, which sucks, right? We've already identified that it sucks really bad. 
We hate that. If I commit that, I'm going to go to jail and I'll be murdered very quickly, right? So my pain and suffering will be out, but there will never be sex trafficking again. All the kids, all the girls I'm going to save, <laughs> I might be the best dude ever. Would you guys change anything? No. It was a good speech, right? Yeah, it was a great was speech. Good. Yeah. Would you, what would you do, Mitch? I feel like you said Super Bowl and what immediately popped in my head was the uh, like mass shooting. That would, I mean... Just thinking about it. Yeah, you'd have to go that. mow down some cats, huh? Yeah, that would be terrible. But like the fact that it's there's it's happening more than we actually know. So like I think that's a bit ridiculous. So I think that would be something I would maybe mm -hmm. do. I don't know. But here's a good thing. On this bus right now, sex trafficking is gone forever and mass shootings. Forever. Exactly. Jack. <laughs> what's the final what's the final ring? The final stone. Um I'm gonna OD for the boys. Oh shit! Yeah, no more, no more drug problems. But I think you have to be committing. Well, you commit the crime. That's a crime. I mean, so you would just OD? I guess so. I mean, if it's gonna save, I mean, it's the biggest epidemic right now in America is the opioid crisis. So yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of answers you can do. I just don't feel comfortable saying most of them. Right. <laughs> right. But I'm glad you guys said mine. Yeah. I'm glad you guys said mine. Do you want me to say one for you? For me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you sure. want me to say one for you? <laughs> Go ahead. Starts with a C is the first word. Second word is an R. You know what he said? Oh, my God. What was that back there? I've not been feeling I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I feel too uncomfortable saying it. Grape. Oh, I think you said C. Yeah, the first word's a C. Oh, yeah. I mean, You're not going to do that? No, I mean, I just, let's, I don't want to even. We're not having not fun anymore. On rec We're yeah. not having fun anymore. We're not having fun talking That's not about what this, this podcast is about. We got to have a good time. So let's just rewind that back. We're not going to cut it, but we're just going to pretend like it never existed. Your boy over here doing what he's doing. You guys said it. If you didn't hear it, don't rewind it because I don't want to repeat it. Mitch is shooting everybody and Jack is ODing. I feel like, Jack, you got out the easiest. But I'm also saving probably the most lives. Yeah. I know I am. But you know you are. You know you're saving the most lives. I mean, taking illegal, like, drugs? Well, yeah. it's not Unless you're an organ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's a cop-out, right? Because it's yeah. illegal to take drugs that are not prescribed to you. But you have to be arrested for it. You can be arrested. And for then OD? Drugs. Yeah, but you're not going to be like, oh, dead guy OD, put some cuffs on him. Get some fingerprints. I'm saving the most lives. So regardless, I'm the biggest hero or not. Yeah. No one. It's okay. Now on this bus, we don't condone drugs, right? No. No, we don't. But stick with me here. If Jack ODs and no one ever can OD again, we could all just start taking drugs, right? So I'm a hero to a mini. It's a mini. One dude's going to start smoking some crystal meth and be like, thank you, McPherson. That's big, dude. It's big. This Man. question is really... Wait, just... But doesn't that just take away drugs? Might have to rethink your answer, Jack. I think we're thinking too deep into this at this point. Yeah, you're right. We we we, good, we did a good job of switching it up, having, going back to having a good time. That's what we wanted. Yeah. Me get, hit me with an ad read real quick, dude, while I rethink about what I need to talk about next. <laughs> I should really start writing notes for this show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this episode, even though we're not interrupting anything. I'm just getting right into it to talk to you about game time. You shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets for your next big event. Game time is fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theaters, theater events near you. Now for me personally, I know that the, uh, the, the national predators are in town for the most of March and your boy does love to go to a Preds game. So when I am ready, when I am ready to dive into a predators game, I'm going to be using game time app, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Game time has deals on tickets right to the start of the event. And even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more with zone deals. You pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% saving. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price 
If you find tickets in the same section and a row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. I hope that's real. 110%. So you're basically making money. I'd go do Game Time app, get you a ticket, and then scour the globe for a better deal. Take the guesswork out of buying with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code BUSSIN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BUSSIN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, low price guaranteed. I'm getting so much better at reading. Yeah, you have those ads have been good. Yeah. And it's gonna like the next ad I read is definitely gonna like fall apart. That's a tough ad. Yeah. There's a lot of verbiage. There's a lot of verbiage. And I'm glad you're recognizing that, Jack. That's just kind of I'm a words of affirmation guy. That's my love language. And for you to do something like that in a time like this, after what the conversation we just went through, <laughs> means quite a bit to me, brother. Um Let's talk a little football for a second, dude. Obviously, it's like we're in a big dead period about football. Free agency's coming around the bend. One guy I want to talk about specifically, the king, Derrick Henry. Where do we think Derrick Henry is going to go? Because I ha- I know there's a lot of places saying Baltimore. So let's take Baltimore out of it. There's two places in my mind that King Henry needs to go to. Do you guys want me to go? And then you guys give me an answer? Or, you want, or do you want to go first? I only have one in mind that I think is probably the same as yours, and it's Dallas. Dallas is one of them. Yeah. I think. I was going to say Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. Buffalo's a good one, too. But I think they have Cook, right? Yeah. Is he a free agent? No. Nah, then, you keep, then, then maybe Derek's out on that. That would be a great thing for him to have. The thing that Derek is not his favorite thing to do is zone read. Like, he doesn't like turning his shoulders away from the line of scrimmage. He likes to get downhill. He likes the outside zone, the duos, the doses, the inside zone type stuff. So, any kind of RPO is kind of tough. And I feel like Buffalo utilizing Josh Allen has more of a difficult time just doing some downhill run game type stuff under center, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, Dallas is one of them for me. First off guy lives in Dallas in the off season. He having the star, even if you're an Eagles fan, even if you're a Redskins fan or commanders fan or a giants fan, wearing the star in your head is one of the coolest things you can do as a football player. That brand that Jerry Jones has created is one of the most incredible things ever. But Tony Pollard, I don't know if he had a great year or or whatever, but getting Dak Prescott opportunities to just hand the ball off once in a while and not put so much pressure on him automatically puts that team into the discussion they're always in in week eight and week nine of the season. Week eight, nine of the season, we got Dak as an MVP. We got Cowboys winning the Super Bowl, this, that, and the other. They have a great football team. I don't think McCarthy's a guy there. They should put Mike Vrabel there, but that's a conversation for a different time. If you bring Derrick Henry to the Dallas Cowboys, you have legit contenders there. That's what you have on the Dallas Cowboys. And all it takes is the piece of Derrick Henry. You have an outstanding offensive line. Tyron Smith is a free agent, but he's getting older anyway. He's been on the same contract for like 15 years, it seems like. He's still got a lot of fight left in him. I believe he'll go somewhere and play, but like we all get, look at my knee, look at me, dude. You get old and you get out of it eventually. You're going to find a little younger there. But Zach Martin, still kicking, still crushing it. Very strong, great gel, great continuity on that offensive line. They got weapons on the outside and a quarterback that, regardless of you know some people's beliefs, can sling the ball like no one's business. So you put Derrick Henry on there, dude. You got to have him on there. If he goes there, I'm telling you, the Cowboys are making a big run at the playoffs in the NFC. The next place, and this is me just thinking from the roots that I've been a fan of for a while. You see the shirt I'm wearing, 2024 champs. These aren't even available at the shop, but we should do a a day this week. You know what? We're going to do that this week. Wait for my tweet at Taylor Lewan 77. These, these shirts and the Michigan championship clothing will be on sale for one hour at store.barstoolsports.com slash busting with the boys. That's where it's going to be. Already? Right after. They went live right after the, they won. And then after they, got... they won, we went live, then we took them down and not get CND. And then we put them up for an hour and took them back down and we didn't get oh, CND. Okay. So I'll double check on that. If we're not CND right now, I'm going to put these things out here at some point during the week for one hour. So keep a close watch on that if you're a Michigan fan. But that brings me into everything I'm about to say. The Los Angeles Chargers would be an incredible place for Derrick Henry to go. Who's the new head coach? One of the goats. Harbaugh. What does he love to do? When they played Penn State in the second half, Mitch, you'll notice because you're a Penn State fan, how many times did they run the ball? 30 times in a row. They did not register one pass in that game. We know there was a PI type of situation. We're not even getting to that. 
they love to run the ball. They love to impose their will. The Chargers, you think of them, you think of Justin Herbert, you think of Keenan Allen, who we've already brought up once in this podcast on accident, and a bunch of the weapons they have, Mike Wallace. Uh, they want to throw the ball. They want to be a high-flying offense. What, did I mess it up? Mike Williams. Fuck, dude. Mike Williams, excuse me. Who also might not even be there next season. That's so. okay. It doesn't change anything I'm about to say. They have been a team that throws the ball 45, 50 times a game, and they hardly run the ball. They use Austin Eckler in a very good way. Obviously, he's a, he's a back that can get out in open space and catch the ball. Very different from Derrick Henry. He's a free agent this year. If you put Derrick on that team with a left tackle that had, I believe, a bicep tear, but he's coming back with made a Pro Bowl in his rookie year. Absolute stud. Offensive line that's gotten better and better each year. You put him there and you allow to take some of that pressure off Justin Herbert, which we already know he's a generational type of talent. People love Justin Herbert. I haven't watched enough of his games to go plant my flag in the ground and say, this is the guy, blah, blah, blah. But I know he's an, he's an absolute stud. I think he got a massive contract too, right? Boom. So that tells you everything you need to know right now. You put Derrick Henry on that team with, with Harbaugh. He gets to get with Herb, that strength coach. He gets to have Jesse Minter as the DC to get that defense with all the stars on there to go up. We're talking about possible contenders in year one. That's if the boys buy into Harbaugh's unique personality. That's what I think. I think if you're able to get Harbaugh to die, if you're able to believe in Harbaugh and buy in the way the kids bought in at the University of Michigan and put your pride and set it to the side and know, yeah, we're going to do some cheesy shit sometimes. They, who's got it better than us? That's not cheesy at all. But these very unique kind of isms that Harbaugh has, if you can get past that and kind of just buy into his winning culture, Chargers, you guys could legit win it all. That I'm, I'm a fan this year. I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to be a fan of the Chargers this year as well. Obviously, I'll always be a Titans fan. But I'm going to be a fan of the Chargers this year too. It's another team that I'm picking. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I like Dude. Dallas. I think Dallas would be the, the my favorite landing spot for Derek. I think he could utilize their office. Tony Pollard's, I think, on his way out there. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be sad regardless as a Titans fan. I know, bro. But I'm excited to see exactly where it goes and you know, like the longevity of it. Like, does he go one more year somewhere and then hang him up? Or is he in this for like another three seasons type thing? And I mean, You saw the way he was talking. You saw the way he was talking insane. on the bus. I mean, for him to go 10 plus years, what is he on year nine right now? This is year um, eight. I think he just finished year eight. Yes, yeah, so he's going to year nine. Going to year nine. If you were to make a decade as one of the, you know, staple running backs in the NFL, it's just, it's insane. Already a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you obviously, we haven't talked about the Titans at all. The chances of Derek going to the Titans is very small, I, like, a, like minute. But, We've said it on his podcast, dude. He's like 600 yards away or something like that. A very achievable goal away from beating Eddie George's rushes with like 100 less carries already. What's that? I think it's, he has more than 100 less carries. He has more than 100 less carries. He's got, I mean, I think he's got, a, he's got 100 total touchdowns with his five touchdown passes and his three receiving touchdowns. But he has a chance to break, and he's already the best running back in Titans Oilers franchise history. I said Oilers, yes I did. History, but if he stays for one more year, it's truly cemented. There's no going back, no take backs he's on Derrick Henry. That's the kind of cat we're fucking talking about here. And that to me is cool cuz I think legacy is a very cool thing. And obviously Derrick regardless of what he does and where he goes, he's going to have the same kind of treatment Eddie George has when he come, when he's obviously he lives in Nashville, but when he goes back to the stadium it's like one of the all-time greats. Derrick Henry is one of the all-time greats regardless of how much longer he plays and who he plays for. But I just personally, and this is not, if you're a young football player trying to learn the ins and outs of football, do not think like me because I am a extremely, and I say this as a, it's a bad quality. I'm an extremely loyal cat to the franchise, like to the Titans. Like, even if I could play football, which I cannot, I would have been like, I only want to play for the Titans. You put on one uniform for so long, you buy into something for so long. I just wanted to be a part of that. So going somewhere else, although the idea is cool, like, I mean, uh, Jersey Jerry would always bring up, hey, go to the Steelers, go to the Steelers. Like, yeah, that would be sick to play for the Steelers. It'd be sick to play for Kansas City. It'd be sick to play for all these other teams. But something about the boys in the two-tone blue, man, the guys, the underdogs, the constant underdogs of the NFL, that's where I belong. That's where I, I belong. Derek, he belongs to the highest bidder. That's what I, I mean. That's what he needs. Being in Baltimore would be sick. Yeah, I just don't. Sick and aim. 
<laughs> Dude, that would be sickening for uh, Titans fans. I just, like, I mean, Stephen Nair did it. So I mean, really, yeah. It's it's a it's very much a normal thing for Titans players to to follow the Ravens. It's weird. But seeing him in like those all black unis, I think would be so hard. Yeah, I'd go hard with the dark visor and everything too. They have dope ass uniforms. They have they have dope uniforms. Baltimore would just suck to live in, man. I don't even know shit about Baltimore, but the times that I played there, driving through, and it's like never a good area around the stadium in any place you play. But like, damn, I drive through there. I was like, get me a crab cake and get me out of here, man. That's kind of what I want to do when I'm in, when I'm in Baltimore. I remember when I went up for that second round playoff game when you guys beat the shit out of them. Um, Appreciate that. I was walking in a Titans jersey, and I remember a cop stopped me and was like, hey, man, like, welcome. Like, hope you guys have fun. He's like, whatever you do all day, he goes, do not cross those railroad tracks. He goes, don't do it. He goes, there's a really big chance if you do that, you're not coming back. And I was like. No shit. I was like, all right, appreciate the heads up. Um, but, yeah, God. the bank is, like, smack dab in the middle of bad project areas. Which kind of adds, Definitely. right? Kind of adds to that cool shit. Yeah, because the Ravens do have that type of attitude. Like, I know people hate the Ravens in Nashville, Tennessee. I don't hate them like that. I just think I don't want to live in Baltimore. But I think, like, Lamar Jackson, cool. Like, uh, who is uh, Humphreys? He, Marlon Humphreys? He seems like a cool guy. They just see o, o, uh, OBJ, who I think is a free agent. But, like, they just seem like they have a cool squ uh, squad. Ronnie Stanley is another dude that's on there that I think is, like, a, a cool guy from what I know about. I've talked to him a few times. But... Anyway, I think it'll be cool to watch. Where do you think Justin Fields is going to end up? Part of me feels like he's going to stay with the with the Bears. Where you can you can bet on it. Hashtag DK partner. Hashtag DK partner. Um, he's like very good odds, like low odds to go to the Atlanta. Ah, uh, yeah, Atlanta would be a good stop for him. I mean. It's just tough because the guy has all the talent in the world. He just hasn't been able to put it together. Now, is that coaching? Is that development? Is that work ethic? I don't know. The guy seems like he owns the locker room when it comes to all the boys, the way his teammates talk about him. I have a hard time with Ohio State quarterbacks. We've only seen one guy with one year of experience that's really shown that they can get it done, and that's C.J. Stroud. I, I think Justin can do it. He just The Bears organization has... They've been abysmal. Historically been a shitty organization. Yeah. Um, Historically, well, since like the '60s, mm -hmm. the '80s, um, but they just they haven't. If you look at their quarterbacks the past 20, 30 years, like there's there's nobody that really sticks out. I mean, they went to the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman, like yeah, he's like he, he's not really anything crazy. But I think I think the organization did him wrong. So you think he should leave? You think they're going to take J.J. McCarthy in the first overall pick, and then they're going to? No, I, think gonna, I think they're going to take Caleb Williams, but I think Justin Fields should get out. If the Bears are going to move on from Fields, they need to trade him before. Obviously, everybody already knows that, but the minute you pick somebody up in the first overall pick as a quarterback, that quarterback you had before, his trade value has gone in the dumps. Because there's, there's they know you need to get rid of him. They know you do. And they'll just sit and wait, because I think he's going to year four. Right? Uh, what are we talking about here? DraftKings. All right, boys and girls. Yeah, listen. Let's get in on the NBA action with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official partner, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit five dollars or more can get a no sweat bet up to one thousand dollars back in a bonus bet. What's a no sweat bet? It's like getting an offensive board, uh, miss your first shot, you get another opportunity to score with a bonus bet. You can also follow what. All of your favorite Barstool personalities are betting on by joining the Barstool betting group in the social section of DraftKings Sportsbook. Yeah, I really need to get in that, so I need to do that because I've been I've been hitting the DK partnership a little bit. Download the DraftKings download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code BUS. New customers can get a no sweat bet up to one thousand dollars if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code BUS. The crown is yours. I don't know if you guys have used that app. I mean, obviously everyone here uses the app, but if those of you watching, if you haven't used the DraftKings app, I, of all the other apps, and I won't get into the other apps, I enjoy it because when you go to look into the team you want to bet on, and I, I don't know a whole lot about NBA, so I'll, I'll digress on that. But when I was looking up NFL bets getting, bets getting ready for the Slips and Picks show, 
there's like a, a link you can click when you watch whoever, like uh, the Raiders versus the Chiefs. And you can click on the Raiders and it will give you a bunch of information of why the Raiders might win that bet. And then reasons why they wouldn't win that bet. It was a bunch of, it was a slew of information for you to make the most educated possible decision you possibly could. So shout out DraftKings Sportsbook, hashtag DK partner. Um, do we want to hit a shout out, no free shout out? Mitchie, start us off. All right, last week I uh, shout out hugs with your boys. This week, shout out giving compliments to your boys. Oh. Just hyping your boys up. I know sometimes Fuck yeah, dude. Taylor walks in with his, with his sunglasses on. Like, you know, last week I'm like, yo, you look like Maverick from Top Gun. You mean Rooster. Rooster. That's right. With the, with the, and I could just immediately just see your face light up. I mean, I'm always there for you with the compliments. But, you are, dude. But when you receive one, from your boys too like you're just like will complimented my shoes one time like yo every time i wear these shoes i'm like hey come on like, yo, what if i know you... will i know will likes these shoes mm -hmm. there's there's like just you need to hype your boys up more and i think it, it's some people like some guys might find it weird like girls are doing it all the time like you see it on instagram like you see all the comments all like you're gorgeous or whatever da, 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 da. why can't guys do that yeah, why can't Norm guys comment on your Instagram and say you're gorgeous? Normalized dudes hyping up dudes. So, shout out giving compliments to your boys. That's been a staple of busting with the boys for the longest time. But it's an oldie, and it's an oldie but a goodie, dude. There's always, by the way, it's an oldie but a goodie. Every time you get the chance to tell your boy they're doing something right, it's great because it it hits you on the scale of, because we all like to shit on each other too, right? We just had a five-minute deal about SNL and how it's fun to shit on your boys and it's not fun to get shit on. But there's a pendulum swing when you get to give your boys a couple compliments too. So when you do get in the nitty gritty of coming at somebody for going to work at it on, on Friday at noon, they know they're your fucking boy, no matter what. And that's the beautiful thing about it, dude. I love that one, Mitch. Jackie, what you got for us, baby? Um, What do I have? You want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Shout out dudes being prepared for a podcast. That, uh, no, I'm just fucking with you. Um, I want to shout out Lucy. Listen to this. That's her breaker. That's a breaker. I got mine. I just want to put another one in. The thing I've noticed about these Lucy's compared to the old brand I'd use, like these are more milligrams, but I keep these in way longer because they, the flavor lasts for such a long time. I felt the same way when, yeah. I, when I was using them. My last ones, I was going through two cans a day. And with these ones, I literally, I'll go through one can a day. And it's a, it's a tremendous difference as it balances out. This is one more milligram than my, my last brand. But my shout-out, no free shout-out, goes to um, establishing family traditions. So in October of this year, I think I mentioned this already, Talon's grandmother passed away. And Miss Connie, she was a phenomenal woman, uh, Irish lady, uh, lived on the same plot of land her entire life. That's not true. She lived on the road too. But she lived in this, this house that Talon and I, when we first met, we bought. And we was like, hey, you just live, enjoy your life type of thing. And when I would go to um, Canada with her, I would always go and make time with Connie to go get some tea. And I would sit there, we'd, it would just be me and her and she'd make me tea and we would drink it. And she would just, I would sit there and just listen. And she would talk and talk and talk and talk. And I didn't see her a whole lot because obviously I'm traveling a bunch and I live in the States, but always a, uh, a pleasure to be around that woman. So she passes away. And one thing she always did for Taylor and the kids was, and even when Taylor was a kid was, she would make like homemade spaghetti and meatballs. And so ever since then, every Sunday, Talon make like truly makes noodles by scratch, like the flour, the egg, everything. She makes meatballs by scratch. She sets up this entire dinner. They, they, they all go out and buy red, flo uh, red flowers because it was Connie's favorite color. And Wynn is in charge of setting up the entire table, which she takes the most amount of pride in to the point where, Willow and I aren't allowed to be in the room, which I, hypes me up because that's less work for me to do. Are like We're not allowed to be in the room because she's so excited to show us. And every Sunday, we have this giant meal of just meatballs and pasta or, or whatever. And uh, that fires me up because I think about it as like when I grew up, I, I can't remember one time, one time ever sitting with my mom, my dad, and my brother and having a family meal. Not once. But I know that my kids, when they're older, and they go somewhere, they're going to miss the meatballs. They're going to miss this. And like the small traditions that, hey, what are your parents doing today? Well, it's Sunday. You know, they're having their Italian dinner, the two of them right now, or something like that. Establishing traditions, I feel like it's like 
the best, one of the best core values of, of having a happy family. So shout out family traditions. Thank you, boys. <clears throat> that was a good one. Um, I'm going to shout out finally caving <clears throat> to your friends who's been convincing you to watch a show that you've put off for a while. Um, and my, the, the specific show is Masters of the Air. If you haven't watched it yet, very, very good show on Bro. TV. Have you seen it? I'm caught up. Yeah, I uh, last night I watched like four episodes in a row. So um, I think I got like one more maybe um, to get fully caught up. But <clears throat> it takes me a second. Like I like to stay in my lane of shows. And even like if like a guy you respect their opinion on whether it's movies or TV tells you to do something, part of you just sometimes is not there. You're not fully invested. So last night I finally took the commit jumped off and it is a phenomenal show and just that era of world war ii and just kind of like how life is so much different and like it moves a little bit slower when they're just kind of in their off time um i really appreciate that kind of like the charm of of that era um in the meantime while they're going bombing the nazis so oh yeah dude. it's uh it's been a great show and i'm excited to see see where it goes hey for those of you that seen the show this is a spoiler alert but i'm gonna ask jack a question what part are you on right now I I'm trying to think what was the last thing I saw. Cause I kind of dozed off in the last episode, but I don't want to like give away like yeah, it's probably anything. fair. Yeah, because my my specific reference is gonna be somebody who's no longer that I yeah that everybody loves yeah everybody loves this guy. So I I'm not sure exactly where we go from some... there, but I. I I just want to get caught up. So tonight I'm gonna to get fully caught up because I believe there's six episodes out right now. Yeah, six and episodes. The next one comes out March first. March first, and yeah. then is do you know how many episodes there are in the full season? I don't. I, I'm sure there's eight, maybe ten. Ten. At most. Hopefully ten. I know. I'd hope ten. Cause like, yeah, the show's amazing, and I you guys know I love. I absolutely am obsessed with aviation, and to see these boys in the air, bombs going off, coming back. Most of them coming back. Actually, sometimes only a couple yeah. coming back. And their planes are like hanging on by a thread and they're still able to get back home. Dude, and it is insane. The intensity. Because you got these old bombers in, in the 40s and then during World War II. It's like six dudes on a plane. Two pilots, two gunners, uh, a navigator, navigator. And then, oh, there's two more. One guy in the bottom with a little gun thing, which that's got to be the scariest one. And in like that first episode, the, I guess there's like a breach in it. It's like negative 50 while they're flying. And he's just right. getting like frostbite yeah. like in the tank. So, bro, the, and all those guys, like imagine being like, I never thought about this, but being the pilot's one thing, but being the navigator where oh bullets are just going off and you're like, hey, uh, Charlie, blah, 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 just went down. You got to like, while we're getting Correct, shot, like two degrees yeah. north. Yes, bro. And you're like, tell us where we're going. Hey, Crosby, where are we headed? And you're like, oh, and he's like freaking out, like doing his little, that's got to be the most stressful job. Because nowadays it's just fully automated. Like, Dude, you got two boys the, in there doing yeah, their thing. But then they're literally using like a protractor and like a ruler yeah. to just he, make sure they're on the right degree of angle. Yeah, and being a pilot too, when when all that flak's coming in and you're just like, we, we're just going to fly straight. Straight <laughs> through just, it. And just, yeah, and it's like one thing like blows out one part of the thing, but the plane's still rolling. Hey, engines out. Yeah, three engines yeah. are out. We got one. Yeah, left. cut it off. Start threading it. They just say the same shit every single time. It's like, damn, bro. And you're just on the edge of your seat, like truly, like heart rate's at 120, watching these boys try to bomb a site. It's just crazy, crazy. So yeah, that's an outstanding one. Have you seen it, Mitch? Bro, yeah. you need to jump on that. I think the strategy of it too is yeah. cool. Where they're like. They're going for like the ball bearing factories, like they will like slow the production of all the war machines in Germany. Yeah, the it's railroads. Like, like going for like the army bases. They're going for the like production sites that are the reason the armies are thriving. And I like the strategy aspect of that. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I, dude, my heart goes out to you though with what's his name. Yeah. I know. I mean, same to you. It hurts, dude. And I like it. feels like it's not over, but I don't know. We're going to. In your head, though, it's like it can't be over. Because if that's the guy, it's like there would have been way more of a. Uh, we we talk about a it story after. about it. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. But fuck, bro. I love that guy so much. Is he the coolest actor out there right now? Maybe. He's got to be, bro. See, Miss, I don't even know what we're talking about. That means we're doing a good job right now. Yeah. Uh, what you need to get is ship, dude. 
Shift offers reliable, trustworthy same-day shopping and delivery. The joy of real human connection is why customers choose Ship. That means connecting with Ship shoppers and having way more time to connect with people around you. Shift is there for all of their customers' needs because they are full, offer a full range of retail options for same-day delivery needs. They are all they're able to bring big and small delights to members' busy lives. Get everything you need delivered with Ship. Ship makes shopping from your local stores easy so you don't have to waste any time. Get everything you need. <clears throat> Snacks, drinks, hangover supplies in as soon as one hour. Ship connects you with trusted personalized shoppers that meet your needs. They're proactive, solution-oriented, and they know. They know what you like and they, are, they care about getting it right. Enjoy a 14-day free trial with unlimited deliveries at Shipped.com. 14 days for free, dude, for someone to do your bidding. Hungover, too. That's a hell of a deal. Should we get into this Gary V episode? I think it's about time. Now, listen, Gary V, for those of you who don't know, you've obviously been living under a rock. Gary V established himself as a, a salesman for a, a, his family's wine company. They had a liquor store. This dude's work ethic is second to none. The way he gets after life, the way he approaches life on a day to day basis, when he came into, we, this is in Vegas when we shot this, when he came into, our suite to shoot this episode. He was on the phone, hangs up, boom. He's got four or five cats with him. Very diverse group, by the way. Good for him. He sits down, does the entire podcast. As soon as he's up, he's very polite, shakes hands, daps everybody up. We get a photo. And then he's literally grabs his phone from his assistant and he's back on the phone. Dude is an absolute grinder. This guy, he puts out, he's all about quantity of content. He's out there on a daily basis. He's literally there at the shop on mute doing calls so people can just see the fact that he's working. Then all of a sudden he'll unmute it, talk to the chat, get some questions and that type of thing. You're truly going to enjoy it. I really have. Hopefully we get to do more things with Gary in the past, man, because it was a, it was a really great time. So please enjoy big hugs, tiny kisses. And before we start, please, for the love of God, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, be a friend and tell a friend about this show. It's the only reason why we've been able to do all this cool shit. We appreciate you guys so much. Enjoy this episode. It seems like we're rolling, right? Yeah. Good to go. Nice. Man, to kick it off, I I uh I have to say, like you you've been a very indirect influence in like the ascendance of bus in. Just I came upon you probably a lot of your stuff was getting in front of me. Um, like my first or second year in the league. Yeah. But just to give you those flowers, like it, it is, it's an so honor humbling. to have you, Thank uh, you on the podcast. Thank you for saying that. It means, yeah. you know, this whole era now, because I was in it early, like it feels crazy to have a positive impact on people from afar. And so I appreciate that. It makes me feel super nice. Yeah, you, I'm pumped you brought, to be on the show, by the way. Yeah. You talk about like, uh, obviously people seeing success. It's like that, like that kind of dumb chart you see like a teacher's on a teacher's wall where it's like an iceberg and the tip That's of success right. and everything That's else right. is all the hard work. And, That's right. uh, and a lot of your videos you talk about like from 06 to 07, how like you started to get into the content game, not knowing that's really, that's not what it is at the time, but the struggle of doing 365 days before you get the call to go on a late night show. Like yes. people don't understand like, your wife's looking at you. Your friends yep. are looking at you. You're like, yo, Gary, what the hell is he doing, man? Like, he's just out here acting crazy. And especially back then. Yeah. When I told everybody I'm going to do this, YouTube was four months old when I started my show. Mm -hmm. So, like, it wasn't like people, like, what you're doing now, people are like, oh, podcast can hit. Right. Like, yeah. it's known. When I was like, I'm doing this, people thought I lost my mind. <laughs> like, I, I, it can't be overstated. Yeah. Like, my brother, excuse me, my best friend Brandon and my dad because we and my cousin Bobby, the core four of us who were running the liquor store at the time, I was the guy. I was buying the wine, I was selling the wine, I was marketing, I was on the floor, and now I'm taking all this time to record in front of a camera and put it on the internet. That would be like me telling you right now, listen, the three of us have to go to Mars, set up a lemonade stand, mm -hmm. and it's gonna work. It was that far-fetched to them. And so, yeah, but for me, my whole life, you know, this may really resonate with you and a lot of the audience. I, I'm almost like reverse Allen Iverson. Like, I like the practice. Mm -hmm. I like the crap that no one sees. It's a great reference. I, it's a really important part to me. I enjoy when it's small. Like, I'm doing Twitch right now. Live streaming, my, are you doing it right now actually, Dustin? A little something, in and out. But like, in my office, I'm sitting in my office doing 10 hours of meetings, and Twitch is running in the background, 90% on mute. Yeah. And people are watching it, but not a lot. Like, why would you watch that? It's like almost ASMR for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I unmute a bunch, I do questions, I give away stuff, we hang out. 
But I watch it, I'm like, okay, hundreds of people are watching now, but I already know my brain. Tens of thousands of people are gonna watch me go about my business day in six years. And like that gets me off more than anything. I love the hundred views, not the millions of views I have on social. I'm almost like, it's almost why I think I love the Jets so much. The chase to finally get it is more interesting to me than getting it. When the Yankees won the World Series, I stopped watching the Yankees. Yeah. But like the climb, the behind the scenes. Yeah, there's multiple layers to everything you just said because we can go into the Jets thing where it's like when you finally get to the result, you've, your process has been all the way a part of like, is the fulfillment going to be there or are you going to look back and be like, damn, the process was truly the best part? I already know the process is the best part. But you haven't bought it yet. I know. Could but, you, but sitting there, I genuinely with a, be- with a green suit on, yeah, signing the piece of paper, yeah. And you're gonna be like, that process was tight. <laughs> you'd be like, I, 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 own the I, Jets I, I believe that that is at 48. Mm-hmm. I believe that it's. I'm very confident telling you that I already know, like to the point where like I almost. I and I. I'm gonna say this. This may sound weird to a lot of people. I'm curious if I get some DMs or emails about this from people that have experienced this. I'm actually so extreme on process over the thing Mm -hmm. that I sometimes almost get like this weird, not depression, but like, I like, I don't know, I don't even, I'm gonna try to articulate it because it's what I do, but like, I'm almost weirdly scared of how not great that moment might be. Almost the let down, like, I don't know, I'm so into the chase Mm -hmm. that getting it is like, all right. Like, like I don't, I, it's actually, I think it's a little fucked up and I'm working on this. I'm trying to be better at smelling the roses and enjoying, my brother, who's 11 years younger than me, has been very wise on this with me my whole life. Like, we would just do these things when he was 22, we started the company and like a lot of great things have happened over the last 14 years. And like, he kind of, he's like, bro, like, like w- good things would happen. Uh, we sold a piece of our company to Stephen Ross who owns the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, That was like a meaningful event. Yeah. At the time. University of Michigan guy. I mean, that's right. Big event. Like, changed the course. Mainly, I was very enthralled to do it because I knew for AJ it would be money that really changed his life at that point, being in his young 20s. Like, it was a real catalyst. Like, it hits the bank account. It looks weird when you've got those kind of dollars in your account and you've been at it. Yeah, it looks like a phone number with an area you know, code it's, and everything. And I was like, all right. Like, like, I don't know. Like, I didn't even, like, I don't know. Like, it's very consistent in my life. I just, I'm obsessed with the chase, and I think a lot of people listening can resonate. Other people enjoy the winning over and over, and it is about the trophies and the success. I'm, I like the process, and by the way, I'd like to be a little bit better about smelling the roses and enjoying these big moments, but I just like the game. I like the practice, I when, like the grind. When you say uh, you work on it, how do you work on it? Meaning, how am I working on you trying like, to enjoy yeah, the like roses? Listening to your by talking, stuff like by that? talking to myself about it. I think we all do that. Like I think everyone has an inner dialogue. We all talk to ourselves about shit. Every one of us right now, us in front of the camera, the crew behind the camera, and definitely everybody who's watching, we know some shit right now that we wish we were doing better or something that's bothering us. Mm -hmm. And you know this, we all talk ourselves into a tipping point where we do something about it. Right. I try to get better and better at making, fixing it or making it better happen faster than dragging it out. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm working on. Do you utilize like a resource, like a mentor or a group of guys or a therapist or? Ish on all fronts. You know, I I think not having a true, like my parents in a lot of ways are the only thing close to a mentor. Um, you know, I'm, I've, I need to be better at being a little bit more vulnerable with my inner circle. Like I'm, like I've, oh, you know, I was tra- I was born in the Soviet Union I came to America, my dad starts working every minute. He was never around because he was trying to provide for the family. My mom was only 20 years older than me. I had a sister who was three years younger. And as long as I can remember, I'm talking like six, seven, my mom's like, you're the leader for your sister. And I grew up in the 80s, we'd go outside and play all day. So I actually actually had to keep an eye on her. And I was like eight and she was five and we're just in the wild. You know, back in the day we did it different. Yeah. You know, like crossing the railroad. I mean, we would cross the street. Cars are like, like, like kids frogger. Like, you know, like, like I real, like, and it was just like ingrained in my mom, by my mom, like you take care of her, you take care of her. I naturally had my personality. So I was definitely also like a leader amongst our friends. And so like, and then I started being very important in my family's liquor store business as a teenager. And by the time I was 22, I was running the business. Mm-hmm. It's always been on my shoulders. 
And I always felt like I was the guy, emotionally and financially, for everything that I've ever been a part of. And so, you know, I didn't feel like I had permission for the vulnerability. I felt that if I showed cracks, everything would tumble. And so that's the era I grew up in. Mm -hmm. That, you know, and honestly, a lot of it works for me. 95% of the time, it works perfect. Mm -hmm. I like it. I want to take the last shot at the buzzer. Like I want to be down, I want the Montana versus Bengals moment. Like if I was ever a quarterback, please give me Super Bowl, last drive of the game, go to win it. Like I live for that, right? I live for it. Um, Even the pressure I put myself on when I do something like this. Mm. This isn't Super Bowl game winning drive, but I walk in subconsciously saying, I'd like to say something that really helps someone on the other side. When you say that to me, when I first walk in, that's everything. Like, why wouldn't you want to have a positive impact on other human beings? Mm-hmm. It's the best. Um, so I like pressure. I like putting it on me. But I, I've, I, I, I'm very self-soothing. Meaning, I, I, this is very left field. So bear with me, audience. <laughs> There's something weird when I see a cat licking themselves, like, right? I've always been fascinated by it. I never understood why. I'm like, that's weird. Like, like I was, yeah. I, but I always would take note of it. I love how he's looking around like, yeah. It's not, yeah, like, I'm sorry, everyone. But, judging him, but like, yeah, I'm really, like, like, in third grade, yeah. ninth grade, yeah. I always yeah. wondered, yeah. like, yeah. 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 but. God, yeah, I told him not to do the cat thing. He's doing the cat thing again. It's funny. The cat thing is, like, something a lot of people, I, Dustin, have you ever heard me talk about this? Maybe one, once or twice, right? This is not a thing I bring out often, but it's been in my mind. I There's something I really enjoy of when I most am feeling pressure, the most it's not going well, I kind of like going into like the shower and like just like thinking and like I, it's, I, it's almost like a action movie or like a superhero cartoon. Like I feel like I can fix myself. Mm-hmm. You know like those mm-hmm. sci-fi things where like they cut off the arm and the arm gets grown back in yeah. scene? That's me emotionally. Like I get a lot of, I, I have this thing where I'm able to do it. Right. And I rely on that almost more than anything else. And I'm not sure if I look back at this clip in 20 years and be like, that was naive, I should have used more. And I can sense a piece of that. Right. But you know, it's really hard when you're 48 and you're this happy and you're not happy. I'm not happy because of my notoriety or financial reasons. I've always been like this. Yeah. You know, I've always been happy because I keep shit simple. I think people complicate life. like. You could have all the money, all the fame, all the sponsors, and then you you guys are having a crushing week right now. It's cruising. I love watching you from afar building, but you know this. God forbid if you get a text right now and someone you love is in trouble, like health, like real shit. Mm-hmm. You don't give a fuck about this. Right. And honestly, I think about that every day. Nothing I'm doing professionally matters. I'm completely detached mm-hmm. from my success and notoriety. I just want the people I love to be healthy and good, I just want to wake up and play my game, which is being an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I always envied, I always wanted to be an athlete when I was a kid, like a lot of guys. But then when I got older, I was like, wait a minute. Athletes go through this such hardcore transition, like the thing you loved and were best at, you're gonna stop in your in football, late 20s? Mm-hmm. You're a child. If, if, you're every, lucky. if you're lucky, if it goes phenomenal, all time phenomenal, mid 30s, late 30s? You're a child. A 37 year old that's watching this right now has no comprehension of how young they still actually are. Society has taught us the wrong shit. Like you're supposed to have your life figured out at 22. It's ludicrous. Like, I don't know, I think, I think, so these are the things that run through my mind and like are my emotional framework. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this episode to bring you Ashley Furniture. If you see our bums, you see how comfortably we look while we're interviewing Gary Vee, it is because of Ashley Furniture. Ashley has great stuff, quality stuff, dude. On trend, comfortable and affordable, perfect seating to watch the game or gaming with your friends. Use code Barstool to save online at Ashley.com. I'm telling you, that couch did me right. We sat in that damn thing for 15 hours at some points just trying to get these podcasts in. It was incredible. Please subscribe, rate five stars, buy the merch, and back to this episode. It seems like uh, the best way, your best therapy is being by yourself with your thoughts. Yes. and I'm my therapist, and there's something really powerful there. That being said, I've gone to therapy. I find it very valuable. I'm pumped people are doing it. Yeah. I love that people are doing ice baths. I love that people are doing you know, meditation. I love that people are doing walks and exercise and reading. And like, I think just like anything in life, everybody who's watching, 
of the seven to 10 things that we all know can make your life better, we all have a mix of the one or two that works best for us. My big thing to myself and to everyone is try them all and see what works for you. Like for, you know, and so I'm pumped when people sit and set out to meditate and that works for them. I feel like I'm meditating every minute. I feel like I'm meditating right now in the meta of this interview. I'm locked in with y'all and the audience, but there is a part of me in the back of my head right now that's also kind of like zenning out and was just like, isn't this great? Be grateful. Like gratitude I think is a currency that runs heavy through me and I think it's something I want the world to be thinking about more because I think we spend way too much time complaining of what we don't have. Mm versus spending our energy on being grateful for what we do have. You, uh, you said something <clears throat> during all this about your process and everything, of talking about the cat and being like, I might look back on this in 10, 15, 20 yeah. years and be like, I, I, I probably should've gone about that a different yeah. way. Since you've been in the internet game for so long, yes. you can truly go look back yes. and essentially watch film on yourself, your yes. views, the way you approach stuff. What are some things you've looked back on in the past where you're like, okay, I can see where I navigated that incorrectly or not incorrectly, but I see things a little bit differently now. This is a great question, and I, I really need uh, people, <laughs> you should be, it's a great question. Was, was it, was really it was really well done. It was pretty well done. It was very contextual to the moment, a little improv, but macro, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was really good. I appreciate that, thank uh, you. The, one, the thing that stands out here, and I, I, this I'm excited about answering as well, things are contextual. So I think a thing that people beat people up about, this is why cancel culture is so flawed. People trying to rewind shit from 29 years ago and yell at people for what is a social norm now, shit changes. So when I was making videos in 2008 and being like, yo, you gotta go hard at 9 p.m. to midnight. At that point, everyone was out of a job. The, the economy collapsed and the internet was exploding. I was right. When someone like brings it up now, 15 years later, and be like, oh, <laughs> people were burning out. I'm like, people didn't even know what the fuck burning out was then. People weren't worried about burnout. People were worried about fucking paying their bills. So, so I think a lot of what I look back at, what works for me, that I highly talk to a lot of content creators, influencers about, is like, never say something you don't believe. The amount of people that say shit that they don't believe in, only with the hope of going viral, is a fucking disaster. No million views is worth looking back at it and being like, you're an idiot. So the reason I don't have a lot of answers to your question is because everything that's ever come out of my mouth, I mean. Mm -hmm. So I feel good there. Yeah. But I think what's interesting is to look back at context. I think the things that I think about is, I think the middle, purple, is the game. I think America's gotten way too red and way too blue. Mm -hmm. And purple is the magic. So when I look at things back, Sometimes I didn't create a hedge or a context point to my overall thought. So if I, I'll give you a great one that's happening now. I'll break it fully down since we have a minute. As you two may know, and as some of the people who are watching who have seen my content, I believe in volume of content. I believe it's crazy for you to do this show with me and not put out 150 clips from the show. But when I say 150, people, take it, and I don't do a good enough job to say not 150 on Instagram, 150. For example, I think 12 YouTube shorts posts from this are important because if you title it properly, YouTube's the second biggest search engine and somebody might watch a clip from this in three years and discover you guys. Because YouTube works differently than TikTok. Mm -hmm. Then there's TikTok, then there's Facebook. Do you guys post clips on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. More because it's a supply and demand issue right now. I'm pretty sure you don't post on Pinterest. It's probably unlikely that you post on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I would argue, is your biggest opportunity for your audience and how you roll. So when I think, it, but, but I'll say in a clip, I'll look back and be like, post 40 times a day. Mm -hmm. And people, people take it as like in their one channel and they're like, that's stupid, or I don't get it, or I can't. Another thing that I've been thinking through, for example, because I've been speaking of volume of content for seven years, is I take for granted that I've made good content. You're making a good show. It has the potential to have seven or 12 or 15 pieces of content. I think of things now more, and I haven't, I've always thought of it this way, but I didn't articulate it, that it is a quality quantity framework. You should post 40 times a day over seven different platforms if you have quality. Mm -hmm. Posting for the sake of posting is not gonna do anything for anyone. Mm -hmm. So I think about those kind of things where 
in, in the speed that I talk, because I get hyper and excited, and the fact that sometimes it's limited, you know you only have limited time, we're trying to get to a lot of stuff, sometimes I don't finish out all the sentences or all the context, and that sometimes out of context, I'm like, oh crap, I wish I added two more sentences because I know the audience took this out of context. Yeah. Uh, there was, when people were making fun of me of like, I was like, imagine your family being dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that went super viral in TikTok. Yeah. Like literally once a day, genuinely sit there for five minutes and make pretend one of them got shot in the face. I laugh at that because kids will roll up on me in the airport like, imagine your family's dead. And I'm like, I realized that they didn't get the full context of what I was trying to say, which is like, if, if you actually did, you could imagine how grateful you'll be. But out of context, and then clipped or stitched, it can seem a little silly. So it's those full thought out things that I leave on the table at times, that I would look back on and be like, ah, I wish I had three more sentences of context. Yeah. Well, Cause what was that quote is like, sh- like shoot him in the fucking yeah. face or Imagine something. Imagine if someone, can, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to make it, a, in that talk that that got clipped on, there was just a lot of like complaining. Like just complaining and complaining. So by the time I got to the 18th question, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you guys are so entitled. Imagine horrible things. Cause horrible things do happen. As we sat here during this podcast, some bad things happen to people that is sad. They lost someone they loved. Like, bad stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, I, I think, of, I don't know how not to think about that. Like, there's almost a billion people on earth that don't have access to clean water. Do you know how insane that is? Mm-hmm. Like, like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how not to, I don't know how to unsee that. There's literally 780 million people right now, predominantly in Africa and parts of India and parts of Asia, that literally, within a 12 hour window, can't get to a, cup of fresh water. And then and then I have to listen to DMs about like why I don't I have a million dollars? Yeah. Like I just don't like do you understand that every human being that's in Las Vegas right this minute for this week should fucking kiss the ground and be fucking thankful as fuck? They have nothing to complain about mm-hmm. in real 8 billion people in life. But that's not how life works. You live in your little reality. Right. And when shit goes awry within your reality, it's annoying because you have it so good and you haven't contextualized the macro perspective of how remarkable you're, there's no human watching this clip right now that doesn't have it awesome. Yeah. But many think they have it horrible. And especially with the way mainstream media and content creators on social media are talking, everyone's looking at the downside without looking at the upside. Mm Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this episode to bring you Twisted Tea. They say if it's so nice, why not do it twice? Twisted Tea is a refreshing hard iced tea made with real brewed tea and 5% alcohol. Full of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted Tea goes down smooth. There is no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted Tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. It is a perfect alcohol slash beverage for game day, whether you're tailgating in the parking lot, watching at the bar, or watching with your friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted and grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today after you subscribe to this podcast. Big hugs, tiny kisses, back to the episode. The Did you have something, sorry? Yeah, I was going to go back to when you were talking about uh, working on being more vulnerable with the with the people in your circle. Yes. You obviously have a mind for business. Like, that's what drives you. Yes. The process, like, you are obsessed with it. Yes. You love it. You have a good piece out there talking about balance. Like, there is no balance to what you love. Like, all those sorts of things. But as, like, you, you spoke to it, too, like, being the leader in your household growing up, being the leader, being the leader of your businesses, being the leader, leader of your family, you do so well compartmentalizing and self-soothing and everything else. How do you like talk about the times you got to check yourself with checking the pulse of the people like in your family, in your household to where your drive and your balance might be indirectly affecting them in a way that it just the wall has been broken down to be like, hey, me being vulnerable here acts, makes me feel better that I'm actually hearing this from you, Gary, because I didn't know you were actually going through that. And that helps the family grow with you because there's this bridge that starts it's to real happen talk with it's your real, with your work talk. ethic. Yeah, I mean, I think. I think it's still a work in progress for me. And I also think people get comfortable in realities. Like, there's a lot of like, peace of mind that I'm able to bring to the people I love the most by holding it fucking down. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like, people love to say to the alpha, I'd love to have you be more vulnerable and tell us. But then when you go there, it's like, fuck. And it's shake, like there's, it's a really fascinating thing that's happening in society. There's this big conversation of like, we want our alphas mom, grandma, dad, uncle, whoever it is, boss, to be more vulnerable. The reality is is that there's a lot of insecurity in the world right now. And when the person that is your foundation 
starts to show cracks, people want to step up for that person, but often they're not the leader because they don't have the capacity to go there. Mm. I've flirted with vulnerability with everyone. I've also seen the reactions to it. Yeah. You know, we want more from bosses. Do you know if a boss went on and went, did an all company meeting, if she or he just said, all right, let me tell you what I'm dealing with and here's all my pains and struggles and concerns and we only have a month worth of cash flow so if we don't get this, again, people are scared shitless. Yeah, And so like, there's, self-preservation there's a real balance to this game. So I'm trying to find the purple. Right. A lot of people are talking shit that they want their alphas to go more vulnerable, but they don't. If you really pay attention to what people want, and so like this is a conversation that will play out in the next 20, 30 years. There's been, a, there's been plenty of razzing and demonization of alpha men over the last 20 years until we're in a war with China. <laughs> I have a funny feeling that those alpha dudes that everybody likes to razz on, when shit hits the fan, they'll be cheering the fuck out of them. Right. So that's just the way the world always worked. People just are very bad at history lessons. I love that answer. And I also love the Gary Vee smirks that he gives. Like, yeah, when, like, yeah, when it, I know when he yeah. gets a line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, kind of yeah, pause that you're used to just so seeing the all consumer can sit there and be like, digest it for a second yeah. before it's the next sentence. Yeah. The dramatic yeah, yeah, yeah. pause is a go-to. How, yeah. how about him? How about imposter syndrome? Is somebody with AKA your work AKA the, the new funny word that we've made it. Imposter syndrome, I'm sorry to interrupt. Imposter syndrome, you mean what we used to call insecurity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The packaging of insecurity as imposter syndrome has me laughing my ass off, and I'm glad I got to finally address it. I don't, I've said it maybe one other place. Like, yes, what about insecurity? I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say in your very like early stages, like YouTube, and you're taking your Never. your sickening work game. ethic no. and putting Never. it out there in Never. the st- in the Not status that. signaling and the hitting on girls in high school. Yes, I know what insecurity looks like, but not in business. Okay. Never, the, day, never the day I did that Social first video, media. You ready for this? the day I did that first video, mm. in my head driving home, I said to myself, I'm gonna fucking win this. I'm gonna be known. <laughs> I'm gonna be the most important in wine business. Literally first one. Because I knew I was gonna grind it. I don't know if I'm gonna buy the New York Jets. You know why? I'm not fully in control. But I know I'm gonna give it a real fucking run. Right. Mm. You know, if, if the Johnsons put it up for sale tomorrow, I'm out. I just don't have enough money yet. Mm. But if they hold on to it, in the range that I think they'll hold on to it, 18, 20, 16, 24 years, I'm in the mix. I believe that to be true. So you're saying your foundation, your cloth was built as this world of social media comments, seeing negativity was there, but like as this stuff transpired and transcended into what is to what people- In high were. school, no one's opinion or peer pressure even remotely came to penetrate the way I walked around. <laughs> I think that's the toughest environment. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it. This is fun to say as a 48 year old man. In my late 20s, mid 30s, when I started being like, whoa, I was a weird kid in high school. I was friends with everyone. That was based on me not caring that my cool friends were making fun of me for hanging out with my not cool friends. I didn't care. I wasn't willing to compromise on kindness. In the 90s, in New Jersey, in high school, there was no way to get to the upper echelon of popularity without being a dick face. You had to make fun of people. Mm -hmm. It just was the currency. Right. I wasn't willing to go there. And- Where'd you learn learn that? Like, how'd you have that? How'd you have that in high school, you know what I mean? My mom. Cause it's like everybody deals with, I, I can even think of myself being like, damn, you see somebody talk shit about how you played in the game. I'm thinking I'm in my twenties at this point, but in high school, that stuff, I'm just trying to imagine somebody that's just uncompromised I, about I'm, like, I'm, you know, I don't I'm, even know it. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm, very much I'm detached from results, even though I want them. Mm-hmm. Meaning when someone says stuff, I'm just, first of all, there's a lot to it. Let's break it down. Let's, cause we're bouncing. People shitting on you in social media should not be met with you being upset for you. It should be met with you being compassionate to them. Do you know how fucking sad a life is that you walk around the internet and make fun of people or try to hurt people because you're in such a bad place saying that you guys suck at this podcast is a little endorsement hit for that person for a nanosecond to feel better about how bad they feel about themselves? All they're doing is tearing you down. They're just misery loves company you. I swear to God, Every single negative post that I see about me 
or in the comments, I literally, my brain fundamentally only says, man, I hope that person's gonna be okay one day. Not one thing about me. That has nothing to do with me. Um, but there's a key to that. I also don't take in when people give me the flowers. I'm yeah. appreciative as fuck. Live for the cheers, die by the booze type of thing. Bro, that shit, if, I could, if we could get the kids, fucking forget the kids, everyone who's watching this, every grown up to understand, if you become susceptible to the fucking cheering, you're dead because the booing will kill you. Mm. I'm grateful for when people leave goat emojis. I'm fucking, gr I, mean, you, I wish you could see what I felt like with your opening line on the show. It's like, thank you, so, it's so nice, but I don't think I'm special because you said it. Which means I don't think I'm a piece of shit when you say the return. Mm -hmm. I know who I am, the end. And unless you really, 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 really know me, how the fuck can I even count it? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many famous people that are universally adored are straight pieces of shit? Probably a lot. Yeah, you always hear the stories, you never want to meet your heroes. Right. It's real talk. So, so far, it yeah, sucks. Yeah, he's, he's I mean, solid. like, you, like, currently, <laughs> right this second, <laughs> universally adored. They're the best. No, they're not. They sure aren't. They do not treat their people well. Yeah. Everybody that's close to them, does not love them. I can go to sleep every night and put my head on a pillow because the more you know me, the more you like me, those are the results I see. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this episode to bring you cars.com. Cars.com is the leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car. Celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars wherever life takes you next. And whoever you're looking to be, there's a car for that on cars.com. Up to 50,000 cars are added daily to cars.com. Shop over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities. Go ahead and find your next possibility at cars.com. Where to next? Probably subscribing to this podcast. Go ahead and get back to those episode boys. When you talk about people that really, really, really know you, how many people <clears throat> would you say really, truly know who Gary Vee is? Zero. And let me break down where yeah, I was yeah. going that, with that. that. That's a context one. Yeah, that's a context I, I was, one. If you said that, we, we, hey, we're clipping that just so we can get the context. <laughs> and then we'll have you come on again to yeah, explain I'm, that. I'm going to be about how close he is with this family. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> I'm obviously going tongue in cheek because I wanted to make two points. Yeah. So the answer to your question on that one, the way you actually asked it, probably a hundred. Yeah. Like if that's I'm a good number. If I'm going to like where I'm really going, yeah. like would you bet your, like if they went to someone in that, if they went to Brandon Warnicky, my best friend who I've known since 14 and talked to every day and still runs winetext.com, like if they said, bet your life on him, he mm -hmm. would. Yeah. Like a hundred, right? 70 to a hundred. I'm very fortunate. Like I always judge leaders of business on the longevity of their team. It's, we took a flight out here, a lot of the Vayner people. Ten, we've been in business for 14 years. Seven, 10, 12 people that have been with the company for 10 mm -hmm. in advertising that has an average of two. Like, that feels great. When I look, I'm like, man, I'm so proud of that. That's only a reflection of how much I actually care about them. So I would say 100 to the way you asked it. The reason I said zero was I wanted to make a point that I'm curious to ask you to. Do you, the thing that I'm most fascinated by is that the only person on earth that fully knows you is you. Because you're the only person that's been there for every single actual thing. Everybody can watch this, and you too as well. There's certain things that nobody on earth knows about you besides you. I think that's fascinating, and I've been thinking a lot about it, which is why I wanted to throw out that fun yeah, answer. You, it's you interesting. Say, yeah, you say Please. a great point. Like, Taylor and I, we have this saying, like, nobody's coming to save you. Like, you know, if, if you think about it, you're the only one who lays your head on your pillow, and I, no matter who's next to you, with whatever stresses you have in your mind, and ultimately, it is is just truly, truly you and you, like that one-player game of you knowing yourself. Bro, in such a real way. And my big thing is, like, how do I, you know, one of the things that drives me is, I feel a little bit of guilt of how lucky I got with my DNA, how lucky I got that I was born in a shit country and came to America with nothing and had a really humble beginning because I think it's advantage. Adversity is foundation of success, I believe that. And then on top of everything else, with those two good things already going for me, fucking the world gave me the best mom of all time that fucking molded and built me. I feel a level of guilt about it. I believe that Gary V exists because of that guilt. Mm -hmm. And gratitude, it's a mix of those two. All I do is try to figure out how to do what my mom did for me. Like all I want to do with my content is build 
true self-esteem, not eighth place trophy self-esteem, which is actually le- leading to a lot of insecurity. Merit self-esteem. And a lot of that led to me with me. I like myself. Most people don't. And it shouldn't be like that. Everyone watching should like themselves. They're just focusing on the wrong things. Right. Parents are beating themselves up every day. They're tr- like, parents are trying. Like, of course you're not gonna be perfect. There's not a soul on earth that becomes a grown up that doesn't have plenty of things to say about their parents. Yeah. It's the rules, no matter how hard you try. Yeah, you had a unique, you had a unique conversation, uh, I believe it was like a, a TED Talk type of situation where you were talking about like work-life balance is almost non-existent, but just if you're trying in all phases, you're phenomenal. I think so. What's work-life balance? Everyone has their own rules. Mm-hmm. Like I have friends that think work-life balance is nine to five, Monday through Friday, okay. Like, I have other friends that think it's nine to seven, Monday through Friday, okay? I have other friends that think it's nine to nine, Monday through Saturday, okay? Like, as long as the people in your circle are cool with it, like, there's all sorts of, there's, there's a cost to everything. There's just real life circumstances. Like, l- the big thing that I focus on is when I talk about shit, I'm not trying to tell everyone that I'm right about what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to convince anyone. I'm trying to share observations with the hope that it helps someone. Mm-hmm. That's a very different framework. I don't think the thing I talk about is applicable to everyone. That's insane. I just think that I love observing and have been doing it for a long time. I don't even talk from my framework. Most of the stuff that comes out of my mouth is not just me, it's what I've lived in combination to what I've observed for the last 30 years, because that's what I do for a living. I pay attention for a living. That's why I have an advertising firm. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm interested in the collective, but that will never be the reflection of an individual. Uh, Gen Z, when people are like, Gen Z, son. I'm like, are you a fucking idiot? Do you know how many Gen Z kids I know right now are grinding their asses off and have incredible work ethic? And do you know how many lazy boomers I know? To just blanket paint these observations is wild. Are there rationales to why there's general statements? Sure. Are those things sometimes like pretty close to on the nose? Sure, like I get it. But like nothing is directly one by one. Mm -hmm. Right. That goes to one on one, you with you. Mm -hmm. Only you know. And you have to make yourself happy because you can't make anyone else happy unless you're happy. Right. That's real. I love it. I know we're getting the spinning wheel of death in the back there. So oh, we come are. on, bro. We're wrap rolling it up. here. Oh, can, man, we, I have can, another, we, I have can we go into overtime? You hit yeah. yours. I have another Gary yeah. too that I, I think would be a lot of fun. What's go that? Ahead. I said uh, nothing. He was talking about you. Oh, no, you go ahead. I said I also have one. I was wanting to get into. Okay, you have uh, 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 Vayner Sports Media. Yes. You have your agency. Yes. Um, NIL. Yes. Getting into that, like you obviously represent, or your your company represents yeah, professional Sports has athletes. plenty of NIL Correct. and pro athletes, And yes. so you're getting into the world of college. I, yes. I just got off the phone this morning with a college coach. It's yes. like, man, you know, there's always a new a new thing of like how yes. the NIL is just out of control. He's like, bro, I am telling you, every player in the uh, end of year meetings sat, they gave a number and said, if they don't get that number, they're, they're going to transfer. the world because they all have I, representation. I love it. What is your thought love. on the NIL world? Love. Here's why, not because I'm in the NIL business. That's called capitalism. Mm -hmm. I love all my capitalistic friends. I have a lot of, this is the, my number, I've got such a fun answer for this, ready? Yeah. My life, because I'm in the business. Unlimited entrepreneurs, (laughs) unlimited dinner and drinks with very well-to-do individuals who love their universities and are boosters to the universities, complaining about NIL. Unlimited. I'm like, let me get this straight, you, are a real estate mogul. You had a free capitalistic American market to make money, and you loved it. You have benefited from being able to have the market be an open market, and now you're gonna sit here and tell me that you like communism? What do I think about NAL? I think it's fair. I think the University of Alabama made a fuckload of money over the last 20 years, and do I think that the humans that directly impacted that are entitled to an opportunity to be a piece of the action? I sure do, because I love capitalism. And for every hypocrite that is into entrepreneurship and capitalism and fucking alpha this and winning and competition, you better shut your fucking mouth. 
about NIL because you are a fucking hypocrite if you don't like, it. oh, you mean you don't like that you liked it in the past because your college was good and these new rules may reset the deck? That I understand. You're a diehard UT fan and you're sad or you're a diehard noted, like I get it. Nebraska. I get it. I see it. I'm going for some Razzie stuff. I'm trying to get some emotions. It worked. It worked. You know, like, yeah, man. I think it's, what do I think about it? I think it's fair. I love it. And people that are crying about it, fucking buckle up. I love Compete. The, I love the answer. I love that. Now put yourself on the board of uh, looking at the the structure compared to like you look at the uh, professional market in the NFL contracts and everything yep. else. Yep. The college world is more of just anybody can leave at any point in time. Yep. If you're on the if you're sitting on the other end of the table yeah. advising that board, what would be your what would be your opinion about it? Let's push for contracts. You know what the best part about merit is? You can adjust. Notice how they're. Notice how they're not running fast to contracts. Why? It works for them too. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. And he gave you me, the, he gave me the look too, so it's almost <laughs> like oh, twenty twenty four. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that sounds like yeah, that like, was a banger cool. point. Yeah. If you don't like NIL, you hate America and you Go hate capitalism. Yes. What? By the way, Boom. by the way, and pretty non debatable. I can't wait for the rebuttal to why not. You. It's either merit and capitalism or it's not. Hey, bro, that's... It's I just, mean, it's binary. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was always sat there, I was like, you know, maybe some rules and regulations would be great, but literally it took this conversation and we're like, absolutely. That's 100% right. Because I think to myself, yeah. I'm like, yeah, they do have to get it figured out because it is kind and of a wild, they can. wild west. That's a wild west out there, yeah. It's the wild west like every other business on earth. Because you think about as if, as football players... We look at it as like, of course. When we went to school, there of was course. no NIL. There's like, there's got to be a sense of loyalty. These the fucking kids. kids. The best, yeah, these yeah. kids nowadays yeah, yeah. are built course, so soft. Yeah. You of have course. that kind of mentality. Of course. And all it takes is one guy you, with, a, know, with a 30 you, second answer, and well, you're like, well, fuck. He, and let me, yeah. and let me, with the little, with the little nod and the smile. Let me give you something. Let me give you, let me give you a little something on top of it that you guys are gonna like, because you've met the OGs. You're doing that, and I get why you're doing that. What about the Hall of Fame offensive lineman? who played an entire career and made less money than the seventh offensive lineman of every team in the NFL right now. Which is a great point, because we had, so we had on. Also, the economy was worse then. Yeah. (laughs) You could get a hamburger for 15 cents and a soda pop. Hey, you you guys should have saved money. Ready Ready for this? Run the inflation numbers. Y'all did better. You're right. You know you you did better. I see, the media, we, I see what's going on here. Medium house co- uh, income now. It's like 270% in the last yeah, 30 years, though. Yeah, because we, we, we've sat with, uh, we've had uh, Ed McCaffrey on, Marshall Falk. We, yep. we had an older uh, interview with uh, yep. Mike Allstott, and it's yep. like they walk out of the room, and you're like, man, we are, in our world, in the whole alpha, it's like, we, you know, we are so much softer than that. what that generation was based on the things that we were And their granddaddies literally were playing at college football, and then an hour later had to go to Germany and die. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. I don't understand how people don't have history lessons. It's so funny you say that. Even when I was playing, <laughs> Gary, even I love when it. Got, <laughs> we got Gary D in the house. Too. History lessons. <laughs> Did anyone take history in fucking yeah. high school? What the next, fuck? time, next time Gary comes in the show, we need to put a camera behind you so you can have this look back at it. Have a light yeah, yeah, yeah. back to you. I need the more camera cameras next time. All right, yeah. my, now yeah. my team's yelling. Yeah, no, yeah. I gotta get the fuck right. out of here, yeah, but yeah. I'm rooting for you guys heavy. Congrats. By the way, real flowers. I also love your audience. I, I read comments for mm-hmm. a living. The way your audience love y'all, the, the, the demo and just the vibe of this whole thing, it's real good. I'm so glad we did this. Thank you. Dude, yeah. thank you thank so you. much. Thank this you. was an honor, yeah. man. Pleasure. This was an honor. Thank you. All time. Man. Thank Seriously. you. Love you guys. So much.